Okay, we're back live here at HP Discover 2012. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, and I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and we're here with Henry Faster, who's the chief technologist at SHI. Now, some of you may know SHI as a Software House International, sort of the legacy name, but uh, uh, Henry, welcome to theCUBE. Right, pleasure to be here. So, um, HP Discover, you guys are a huge HP partner. Um, tell us a little bit about SHI for the folks that aren't familiar with you. So, uh, SHI has uh, been in uh, business for 23 years. Uh, privately held company uh, will be at uh, 4.2 billion dollars of uh, revenue last year. We should be at about five billion dollars uh, for, uh, for this year. Uh, started uh, as, as you mentioned, as Software House International, as a, primarily as a software reseller. But over the over the years, uh, developed into a, a full service uh, bar, uh, both software products, hardware products, professional services, and then uh, as of last year, cloud services. Yeah, so that's amazing growth for. Uh you know, a, a reseller organization. Yeah, uh, absolutely. You do a lot of systems integration, I presume. We a do. Of, a, lot of, a lot of customer services. So, cloud is the big thing. Um, I think, you know, it's a hugely disruptive, you know, trend, especially for the middleman. Mm -hmm. um, but you guys sound like you're embracing it. Talk about what you're doing in the cloud and, and, and how you're helping your customers. So, we looked at the cloud as a, a logical extension of, of the products and services we offer customers. And so, so obviously we sell, uh, we sell software products, hardware products, professional services, integration services. Uh, well, adding cloud services to that portfolio is just a logical extension of that. So whether I sell someone a physical server or a virtual server, uh, it's the same customer. You know, our customers are our traditional IT customers. Our cloud was designed around that concept. It's not a retail cloud, it's not a credit card swipe model. Financial cloud. Um, <laughs> it, 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 it's designed, to, uh, our cloud is designed to run production applications uh -huh. for our existing IT customers. So there's been a big transformation in the uh, reseller channel, system integrated channel, VAR, uh, VABs, whatever you want to call them these days, but you know, the business has changed from box moving to solutions. Right. Um, and everyone now is cloud wash. Oh, we got to have some cloud for you. Right. Um, it's a great way to get in the door, right? For, Absolutely. To, for uh, an integrator or, or a channel partner uh, to push cloud. And some are doing a good job, some are, are just starting. Yeah, talk, take, tell us through what you guys done, because uh, in talking uh, off camera, you guys have been extensive work involved in, in building your cloud solution. Yep. Um, because it, there's a lot of work involved, so just take us through okay. how long you guys been working on your cloud solution, okay. um, who you looked at, and why you decided what you went with. Okay, so uh, we started, uh, we made the decision to enter the cloud over two years ago, uh, and started our, uh, our development effort uh, around uh, our, what we refer to as our industrial grade cloud. Uh, we uh, launched it at VMworld uh, last uh, September, uh, been in full operation uh, since that period of time. Uh, we have uh, approaching 50 man years of design effort into the, into the cloud. Uh, we've taken a, a fundamentally different approach. As, as I mentioned, we targeted our, our traditional IT customers. Uh, and in order to do that, we had to change some of the design tenets that people think about for cloud. And so, one of the things that you typically see in a cloud implementation is that the virtual machines, and we offer infrastructure as a service as our primary cloud offering. Uh, the virtual machines, uh, as they're provisioned, are provisioned into the cloud provider's IP namespace. And so many of the issues you hear about cloud adoption, uh, you know, difficulty in using it, uh, application migration, data migration, um, all those difficulties occur because the virtual machines exist in the cloud provider's IP namespace. So we turn that model literally on its head. Um, well we, uh, we created a technology that allows us to project virtual machines onto a segment of the customer's network in the customer's IP namespace. And so those machines uh, are, uh, it, it, for all practical purposes, identical to the customer's local virtual machines or physical virtual machines. So uh, we, we, we needed to choose a, a, a wide variety of technologies to do that, obviously. Uh, Hewlett Packard is a, a, a very large provider to, to us of technologies. Uh, they, uh, clearly our dominant technology provider, but, but not because we, we started out for it to be that way. Uh, we ran a, a series of exhaustive RFPs around all of the technical uh, components of this, and Hewlett Packard just ended up winning the lion's share of them. What's the, what's the challenge on, on the private cloud? Because we kicked off the, our Cube uh, franchise at EMC World 2010, when EMC was, before they had their great marketing campaign they have now, Cloud Means Big Data, they had Journey to the Private Cloud. Right. And so private cloud's been all the rage. Public cloud has been popular, obviously, for developers and, and for non-critical things, but you guys have cracked the code on private cloud uh, with, with customers. Talk, take us through the, what, what you do to harden that solution. What are the okay. key, what were the key um, 
uh, milestones there? So there, uh, so there, there are several approaches. Uh, you know, so we, we offer our cloud uh, it really in, in, in two very distinct ways. Uh, we offer what we refer to as our multi-tenant cloud, which runs out of our cloud centers. Uh, and then we also offer a service that we call managed private cloud. So our architecture is based on a service core model. And so a service core is a finite collection of server storage and switching elements that we replicate over and over again to add capacity to our centers. But we also have the ability to place those, uh, those service cores, we call them vCores from a marketing point of view, uh, to place those vCores in the customer center. We still own them, we still charge the customer just based on utilization. As an uh, yes, literally, as a cloud appliance. Uh, and so, so customers can have exactly the same experience uh, using you know, either our multi-tenant cloud uh, or our managed private cloud in their, in their own centers. And so from a, a hardening point of view, uh, our cloud centers are, are designed to have no single points of failure, so that the technical infrastructure is, is totally redundant. Uh, the physical infrastructure of our cloud centers is all tier three plus, so they're dual gridded electrically, dual UPS capabilities, uh, dual generators, uh, uh, we, we attach to two separate sonnet rings, uh, each sonnet ring is brought in through, uh, through two different DMARCs, so on and so on. Uh, uh, in, 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 the, in the security space, uh, every, all data inside of our centers, inside of our cloud centers is encrypted, so all data in transit uh, and all data at rest. And so a customer has a, a wide variety of very hardened choices, either from our center directly or by placing our vCores in their center, so that uh, their data uh, never leaves their four walls. Okay, so you offer both an on-premise private yes. cloud, cloud in the box, if yes. you will, and they, uh, the customers can, yes. can, can directly access you, what you, I would call your public cloud. Yes. Um, and then you architect a hybrid of that using a homogeneous infrastructure. Exactly. Um, which, you know, I think, <laughs> Ho homogeneity is your friend uh, in yeah, this absolutely. business, you know, especially the private cloud, I mean, or the public cloud, or the hybrid cloud, sorry. We did a survey uh, last year, and it was notable in that uh, very few of our practitioners in the Wikibon audience were actually doing hybrid cloud. Right. Um, they were very concerned about it. This year, that number's way, way up. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing that in your? In uh, your absolutely. Yeah. Uh, our, 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 and, and it's in, in, in several ways. Uh, you know, obviously, our, our offering itself is intrinsically hybrid. Uh, you can have a combination of managed private cloud on your site and use, uh, a, a, but also get a virtual machines from our multi-tenant centers. Uh, you use the same portal to do that. Uh, you know, there, it's transparent in, in, in that regard. But in addition, obviously people need to move virtual machine loans in and out of, of different clouds. So one of the things that, that we did very early on uh, was design a complete uh, OVF management capability as part of our cloud. And so the open virtualization framework, uh, you know, it, from, our, from our point of view, is absolutely the best way to move standardized virtual machine loads in and out of multiple clouds. And so our intention is, has always been to make it not only easy to move into our cloud, everybody tries to do that, <laughs> but make it just as easy to move, move, move loads out of our cloud as customers need to do that for whatever the reasons may be. So Henry, I wonder if you could talk about uh, the changes that are occurring in your data center design and your network infrastructure as a result of all this cloud activity. So uh, you know, our, our preliminary design uh, has held up extremely well. Uh, so we've had to make no, uh, no changes uh, of any consequence in our networking design, uh, or our service core design that, that I described. Mm -hmm. And so for us, it's been primarily around expansion. Um, so we're opening two new cloud centers uh, this year uh, to, to handle capacity. Uh, and uh, so from a, I think from a learning experience point of view, uh, most of the things that, uh, we've, that we've done uh, are around uh, high performance computing. So uh, SHI was selected as the uh, for infrastructure as a service provider for the Internet2 consortium. Uh, we partnered with Hewlett Packard to do that. And as you might imagine, a lot of the universities are very interested in high performance computing. And so uh, our, our cloud was obviously designed for you know, typical commercial loads, and the universities certainly have typical commercial loads. Uh, but they were very interested in the, in the opportunity to run high performance uh, computing, or HPC, in the cloud. So we've been working uh, with uh, several universities, uh, with Utah, with Indiana, Penn State, Notre Dame, uh, to create a, a version of our cloud, both at the portal level and the vCore level, uh, that directly supports high performance computing. Well, I was going to ask for well, the use cases that you've seen. I see HPC in the cloud is comp compelling because mm -hmm. you, can, you, can, you can run stuff on demand, mm -hmm. uh, which is the benefit, basically, mm -hmm. you know, 
have it by the drink right. versus the CapEx investment. Right. Um, outside of that, what other use cases are you seeing from an adoption standpoint? And that's always a confusing area for other folks that are taking that journey, right? It's like, what are you seeing that you can share with the folks in terms of use cases? Well, we've seen, uh, you know, again, because our cloud was designed to run production applications, see, we see a very broad range of applications coming to our cloud. Uh, so, uh, you know, probably one of the more, most interesting ones actually occurred yesterday. There was a, a, a transit of Venus past the sun uh, that occurs once every 117 years or something to that effect. Uh, and so, uh, uh, so Columbus State in Ohio uh, was responsible for uh, hosting that for the astronomical community. And so uh, they chose SHI Cloud to, to host that event. And so, uh, so all of the web serving associated with millions of users watching the, the, the Venus transit of the sun was running in the SHI Cloud. So we see everything that's from cool. something really out at, at that end to people well, that's who, an who want to run Exchange. Yeah, so, so, you <laughs> got, so you see that full range of, of, of applications. So you got, that's a great example of an on-demand spot resource. Yeah. You need to have that, yeah. um, then you want to provision that pretty quickly. Um, what about retail? Can you guys do any retail? What's the status of the retail market? Uh, so, uh, so retail is a, is a very fertile area for, for us, uh, particularly in the burst computing space. Uh, there, there is hardly any industry that is impacted by, by specific days of the year uh, more than, than retail. Uh, so the retail industry is very interested uh, you know, in, in our ability to provide them burst capacity uh, associated with that. Um, and another interesting use case is related to that. It's the preparation for those periods of time. And so we have a number of customers who, who now use our cloud to launch massive numbers of transactions at their infrastructure in preparation for the Christmas season or Mother's Day or Valentine's, whatever it might be. So that you know, it used to have to stand up a lot of infrastructure uh, to do that testing for a very brief period of time. So uh, we, we have one customer uh, who uses over 2,000 eight-way virtual machines uh, to launch transactions at their own environment. And so uh, you know, retail is very interested in exactly that type yeah, of testing. Yeah, I mean, uh, one of, uh, uh, I think off the top of my head, it's actually several practitioners in Wikibon, one in particular, they have to plan so far ahead mm -hmm. when they make a new infrastructure move, yeah. and then they got to freeze yeah. everything. Yeah. So you're saying that you can really take that pain away, yes. uh, so it all falls on you. Yeah, so, yeah. They, you know, so they don't, you know, so they, they stand up their, their test infrastructure, their transaction infrastructure, mm -hmm. Uh, and then, you know, since it's cloud-based, you know, they, they shut it off when they don't need it, it doesn't cost them anything, and when they need to run those tests, they spin it all up. Henry, have, we have one, uh, we're getting the time, time hook here, but I want to no ask problem. you one final question. Shoot. Um, just for the folks out there who aren't in, in, the, in the details, like we were you know, going down and talking about multi-tenancy, all that stuff, what, what can you share with them about the state of cloud, reality of cloud being, I mean, it's been hype over the years, but over the past two years in particular, um, people have been doing a lot of, ha having a lot of success with the cloud. What would you share with them that you've seen the top three things that make cloud a reality? What technologies, just any anecdotal perspectives? Well certainly all of the key technologies, virtualization technologies, portal technologies, network technologies, uh, you know, have not only continued to improve, improve in, their, in their normal cycle, uh, but have become uh, optimized for the cloud. So there's a, a lot of work that's being done to optimize specific products for the cloud. So that helps us enormously. Uh, anything I don't have to create out of SHI labs that I can use whole cloth from a vendor is, is an enormous improvement. And we've seen a lot of that over the last couple of years. So the technology itself is more applicable security? to the cloud. Can you comment on security? Um, you know, security, uh, there's, uh, it's, the same, it's, the same type of, uh, it's the same type of effect. Uh, the security companies are becoming very focused on cloud security and what, it, what is necessary to do that. There's even a, a subset of that uh, that has sprung up, uh, security monitoring firms. So we use a, a company called Solutionary uh, that monitors our security infrastructure and our switching infrastructure 24 by seven. So in the event of any type of intrusion, they not only notify us, but they're, they're required to notify our entire customer base. And so a few years ago, you wouldn't even find those type of companies. So what you see is you know, the traditional companies and new companies who are uh, either creating or optimizing products uh, you know, specifically so I, for the cloud. And, and the fact that that homogeneity that we talked about before, you can define a security incident the same way, you can mm -hmm. report on it the same way, as opposed to trying to manage that all on your own in the yep. public cloud. Anyway, I know we're out of time, John. But, uh, <laughs> okay. Henry, thanks very much. Oh, my segment. pleasure. Really enjoy, enjoy the conversation. Okay, we'll be right back after this quick break with our next guest, uh, right in this quick, quick second. <laughs>